Welcome back to lesson six, I believe. Starting to lose count now that we are climbing the ranks. It actually might be lesson five. No, lesson six. Five was equations. Six is on what we call the complex numbers. This was a huge topic in Algebra 2. So we're going to spend some time uh, recalling what we can and reinforcing what we don't remember. So today we're learning to represent imaginary numbers. So I can justify that x squared equals negative 1 has no real solutions. Not no solutions, but no real solutions. And I'll know I've got it when I can perform arithmetic operations with complex numbers. Your only vocab word for this lesson today is a complex number. So we're going to do a bit of exploring to begin. Here is a graph of y equals x squared. I would like for you to detail how we can see the solutions to x squared equals 9 on the graph. Right, so this dot, dotted uh, purple line. How we can see the so solutions to x squared equals 0 on the graph. And how we can see the solutions to x squared equals negative 1 on the graph. And most importantly, C doesn't have to mean physically. Right? You could look in a room and see that it is empty, even though there is technically nothing in it. All right, so do your best to detail how you can see the solutions to those three different equations using this graphical representation to support you. Bounce a little closer. <clears throat> All right, let's define what an imaginary number actually is. So a complex number is an expression of the form a plus bi, where a and b are both real numbers, like 2, 3, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10, and i to the second power equal to negative 1. And why do we start with i to the second power? Because we can reverse engineer then the value of i. Right? Within this equation, if I wanted to determine what the value of i would be, I could take the square root of both sides, and I can see that i really represents the square root of negative 1. So a long time ago, rather than write the square root of negative numbers, which don't yield real solutions, so therefore we don't really represent them using numbers like we've been doing, we've opted to use the letter I to dictate that we are dealing with the imaginary number system. The real part of the complex number is forward a and the imaginary part is the i as b is the coefficient to the imaginary number so actually include i two complex numbers are equal if and only if both their real and imaginary components are identical. If they are not, then we would say that they are not equal. A complex number, which has real part zero, so an example of that would be something along the lines of zero for a plus three i, right? So we have no real number, right? The actual value is just three i. We call that a pure imaginary number. That's just some side information for you. It's not that big of a deal, um, nor does it have any implication. So I'm going to leave um, A for you. I think it's a little bit straightforward. You might want to go back to this slide and look and kind of determine how many solutions there should be. Hint, hint. 
But you might want to pause the video at this time since we're going to detail the solution to part B. So in B, if we have x squared equals negative 9, I'm still going to apply the same algebraic processes. So if I have a variable to the second power, I would take the square root of both sides and the square root of x squared will yield simply an x. That's kind of why we're applying the square root. Now we have something interesting happen here. This square root of not square root of negative nine can be rewritten as the factors of square root of nine times the square root of negative one. Right, negative one times nine will yield a negative nine. We know that the square root of nine is both positive and negative three because we're starting with a quadratic. But this square root of negative one, as we detailed over here, is really representing an imaginary solution. So we need to take that into consideration when typing our solution. We will have, let's see, oops, wrong button, there we go. Uh, plus or minus three, I as our answer. And I'll see if I can find out what the keystroke is for to get the plus and minus on top of one another. But there are two solutions here. We could always double check our answer by taking something like 3i positive and raising it to the second power. So let's do that. Some scratch work here. 3i times 3i is going to yield 9i to the second power. And from our initial statement, i squared is equal to negative 1. So this is really 9 times negative 1, which is negative 9. Our solution checks out. I'd like for you to apply that same thinking here for c. And for a, that should have been very straightforward. We are more or less doing the same thing here. However, there will not be two solutions because they are specifically giving you one number. Why is this different than the previous slide? In the previous slide, we had an equation that involved a quadratic function. Remember, a quadratic is parabolic, therefore it curves, indicating we will have two solutions. Here, this is a number, the square root of 25, on its own is just five. One solution. So I'll know if you ask a question on this that you didn't watch the video. So make sure you watch the video. And tell your peers on Discourse to watch the video. You'll come to realize that there's a pattern that emerges with our imaginary numbers. In the previous slides, We've ascertained that i is equivalent to the square root of negative 1 and that i squared is negative 1. I would like for you to determine what i to the third power is. Okay. We can rewrite i to the third power by adjusting the exponents and then taking our previous terms and implementing them accordingly you'll come to realize that there's a pattern that's going to happen every so often. I don't want to explicitly say that here because that's going to be your opportunity to discover. And then over here in our text box, after you explain, you'll demonstrate what i to the 4,446 power simplifies to. So briefly, share with your peers. How is arithmetic with complex numbers the same as real numbers, and how is it different? There are no right or wrong answers here, so long as you are speaking uh, to some degree about arithmetic and our operations um, with numbers and imaginary numbers. All right, <clears throat> that brings us here. 
So I'm going to actually build in a checker so you can see how many you've gotten correct or if you're on the right path. But we are looking to match up our expressions with one another. Right, so in this case, I could take something like, let's say, what could I take? What could I take? Let's go with this one here. here. 5i, 1 minus 2i. <clears throat> if I were to distribute this, this would distribute and be 5i minus 10 i squared but in the previous slides once again we were informed that i squared is really a negative one so this is negative 10 times negative one so our final total is 10 plus 5i if you wrote it as 5i plus 10 you would not be incorrect but this lot this card and this card are equivalent expressions and you're tasked with doing that with the rest of them. So we, we can develop a bit of fluency here. And that's where we're going to pause and then come back together before we have our quiz the following day on Lessons 1.2 through 1.6. Thanks for joining me, and I will see you in class.